What's going on Cryptocurrency Universe? It's the Bitcoin Miner here guys and today we're going to learn how to use the Beerus Enigma wallet which was produced by the Komodo and Beerus project teams. It's actually a really cool wallet that's a multi-coin wallet that allows you to store several different cryptocurrencies. I have been using this for about eight months maybe even a year now and I use it quite often with mining coins because I can pull up a light wallet really quickly and have a place to mine to and store them. So let's go ahead and get started and learn how to use this. We're going to click the learn more button if you're on the Komodo website, which will take us over to the Virus website. The Virus website is viruscoin.io, and then you're going to select the Virus wallet. Once you get to this page, we're going to need to download the Windows wallet is what we're going to learn how to install today. The Linux and Mac wallets will work very similar, although the installation process will be slightly different. So we've already taken the liberty and downloaded 5.7-4. And it's going to come zipped. Once you have it, you're going to need to unzip it. So you'll need to use a software, something like WinRAW, or Windows sometimes has it built in as well, depending if you're using 10 or 7. So let's go ahead and extract it here. This can take a minute or more, depending on your computer's processing power. Once this is done, we will need to use the shortcut to go ahead and start the wallet. And you can create a shortcut here and put it on your desktop to make it really easy to access the wallet in the future. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and start the wallet and learn how to use it. This takes just a second to load. All right. Now, the first time you use this wallet, we're going to have to activate different coins. If you had used it in the past, you could just simply use a shortcut. Let's cover some basics. There's a light mode and a native mode. A native mode is downloading the entire blockchain from the beginning until the current time. So you have to be able to store the entire blockchain data on your local computer. It can be quite large, depending on what blockchain you're downloading. It can be anywhere from 10 gigabytes up to 100 or more gigabytes and if you just needed a light mode version, let's say that you were just mining a little bit of Zcash and you just needed a place to store before you can send it to the exchange. You can just go ahead and use a light mode and that will be up and running very quickly once you set up a light mode wallet. Uh, for today though, we're going to start with the native mode and show you how to activate a native mode. Now if you're also trying to stake cryptocurrencies like Virus or Komodo, they both have a staking feature, you will have to use the native mode. Virus, I think, has a 23% annually stake rate only for this last year, and then it will get cut down pretty drastically. It's a newer coin. Komodo has a 5% stake rate uh, or on a yearly basis. It's a more established coin. To give you an idea, if you had 100 Komodo, you would get uh, about 5 per year extra, so you would have 105 just for storing it, holding it, and putting it in a staking wallet. And Virus would give you about 23 extra if you had 100 and you held it for a year uh, for staking the wallet. Now keep in mind, this is not an interest payment. You are actually physically uh, doing work on the network. You're acting as a node, more or less, like a master node. The difference is the master node requires a minimum amount uh, and they also have to sometimes be locked and other different criteria. So this is similar to a master node because your wallet is actually performing processes in the background, unlike a light wallet. So you're actually part of the you're one of the nodes on the network. And this is how you can this is how you're getting rewarded for staking that currency. So we need to go ahead and activate our first coin. So this is the first time we've ever used this wallet. So we're not going to start down here. I just want to explain the basics between a light mode and a native mode. So let's select activate. And it also gives you a good description here between light mode and native mode. So we're going to do Virus today. And we want to do it in a native mode. So let's go ahead and activate that chain. Now in native mode, it creates a wallet.data file. If you guys have ever used a QT wallet, this is a 
very, very nice advanced version of the normal Bitcoin QT wallet that you may have used in the past. If not, don't worry. I will show you how to back up this wallet and where to get your wallet.data file and store. This stores all of the information about this particular uh, coin and any addresses so you created 10 addresses it would store everything for those addresses now that we're in here this is going to take an hour to several hours depending on your download speed and the size of the blockchain in order to sync the computer with the entire blockchain so remember it's got to download from day one from the time it started all the way till now and get it up to speed now in the meanwhile while this is doing this I will show you how to add another coin to your wallet. So your different coins will show up here on the left and this is the actual coin that you are working with. So let's say that you have a ledger and you have a 20 word uh, seed that you use or a, a keep key which is a 12 word or any other device that would give you a different word uh, password for your access of your funds. You can import your ledger device or your uh, keep key or other devices into this or any other wallet where you have the word phrase. So you would simply just paste the word seed phrase here and click import. You also have the ability to do a WIF wallet import format um, which will which is a little bit more complicated and we'll get to address that in a different video. But for today we just want to keep to the basics word phrase that everybody knows. So if you do not have that um, and you also wanted to activate another wallet, let's go ahead and do Komodo as an example. So this is a very versatile wallet. As you can see, what I meant by using this as a great mining wallet, because I can spin up something for Zcash really quick, Ethereum also, Bitcoin. There are tons of different coins that this is actually functioning and allows you to work with. So a lot of these are ERC tokens. So the, the, the it works with almost all ERC tokens. It's a huge potential list. But there are still other coins that will, will work with as well that are not ERC tokens strictly. As you can see, you have Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Z, a Dash, and so forth. But we're going to select Komodo. And we're going to do a light mode this time instead of the native mode. And we'll cover the, show you the difference on how to set it up. So let's go ahead and activate this coin. Now, it's asking us for a wallet seed phrase, like I showed you earlier how to import it. But we don't have one. We need to start a new Komodo wallet. So we need to create a new one. And this is the most important part right here. Remember we talked about taking your seed phrase. This is your, your money password more or less, the seed phrase, and importing it earlier. So we need to take this and write it down, store it somewhere not on a digital device. Even taking pictures of it can be a bad idea. Your best bet is to write it down on a separate, couple separate pieces of paper and store them locally. You can uh, also print them, uh, which is a little bit more riskier. But well, however you choose to store them is up to you. But ideally, the best option is written down, stored in several locations, uh, and you have access to it you know, no matter what because this is how you're going to get back into that account. We do not need to mess with any of these other settings. Now we're going to need to copy this and then show that we've also copied it and stored it here. Now this is also asking us to create a pin. So this selection here is going to restrict our, our pin to only have certain things that a file name can have, like a dash and an underscore. So depending on the pin you would prefer to use, do you, you know, would you like to use maybe say a and symbol or a percent symbol or however you usually use your password, you would need to unselect this so that you have more capabilities of of your pin instead of being restricted only to these specific restrictions which is alphanumerical characters a dash and an underscore so for this sample I just create a dummy pin I will just do this yeah. 
we will go ahead and register. Okay, so as you can see, I tried to create a dummy one. It did not like it, so let's do something nicer. So this has a capital letter, no special character. Okay, so it did not require a special character, just numbers, capital letters, and lowercase numbers. So we can either put in the password we just created in order to access this account or the word we just copied, the, uh, oops, paste, there we go, or the, uh, the 24 word string that we just copied in order to sign in and activate it. So now we have a up and running functioning Komodo wallet that we can go ahead and receive funds to, transactions, send funds, we don't have anything to send, get wallet information, and receive. Um, so this will allow you to create an invoice, receiving address, and how much is available. I guess once we have some funds, we can create another receiving address. Oh, here we go. Here's your receiving address here as well. This is the same one we have down here. Okay. So this is where you would send funds to your Komodo. Now, let's go back to our Virus and see how far along it is. It's still very early stages. But I do not need to let this completely update in order to show you how this function works. So all we're going to need to worry about now is going to receive, and you're going to need to create a new address, transparent address. So generate it once successfully, and let's also generate a private address. All right, unfortunately, I believe the addresses, the blockchain does need to be synced in order for these addresses to show up. Uh, but you will need to go ahead and generate these, and they will show up down here, and they will show you the difference. Now, let's cover the difference. Transparent address is just address like Bitcoin. Everybody can see funds moving back and forth. A private Z address is a privacy address. It is untraceable. It uses a lot of different procedures from Zcash, Komodo, uh, along with some other techniques. I cannot explain it entirely, but it is a very one of the best privacy coins out there uh, is using the Z address. You have the option in order to use it or not. Um, and then we can't go into send because we don't have coins or it's updated. So we'll have to wait for this to update. Now, let's say that we've already got coins in this wallet and we want to start staking them. Let's say that we have, I recommend Virus, the minimum is a thousand to start with. Anything less than that, it's gonna, you're gonna have a hard time hitting a stake because when, what's happening is you're physically mining the network. The reward right now is 24 in Virus uh, as a reward from mining and staking. So when you win a block from staking, you get 24. So you get your interest rates in chunks of 24. And I think in order to really hit a block is a substantial amount, remember you're going to get about 23%. So if you had 1,000, you should be able to get about 200, 230 over a year period. So you need a decent amount to really start the staking. And I recommend a minimum of 1,000. You can be done with less. So there is not a minimum. It's just an ideal number to, to start with. And in order to get a stake every day, to get 24 virus per day, I think the number is somewhere around 28,000 is what you need, and you'll get 24 virus every day. There's a staking calculator and some other information that you can find in their Discord channel if you are more interested in that. Now, you can also mine directly from this wallet and stake. So we're going to need to select this mining icon here. And now, when you're mining, you're solo mining. So we can just use our computer and mine this coin directly using our processing power. This does not use a graphics card. It uses your processor. So if we wanted to start mining, we can simply put the thread count in here. 
to see how many threads your computer has, you would hit Alt, Control, Delete, Open Task Manager, go to Performance, and once you're under Performance, um, under Task Manager, you can see right here what your computer is doing, what CPU you have, and how many threads you have. You have six cores with 12 threads on this particular computer. I never like to max out a computer entirely, especially if I use it on a regular basis. So I would put, potentially put 10 threads for this computer in here. Um, if your computer only has, say, four cores as an example, I wouldn't overtax it. I would go maybe with two or three cores as an account. And that would allow you to start solo mining. So not only can you have a chance to get 24 Virus Coin solo mining, you also have an opportunity to get 24 Virus Coins from staking. But we need to activate staking and mining here uh, once you get that. And it will automatically take care of it from that point on. Well, guys, that covers down the basic usage of using the Enigma wallet. You can activate several other coins that you would choose, whether it be Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Dash, you name it. You can use it for a lot of different variations. I found this wallet to be very handy and useful over the several months I have been utilizing it. Well, if you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great day, guys.